Hey guys, it's Dasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to September's round of A Game of Tomes. If you are new here, uh, welcome. This is my TBR game. I used to play monthly, but then school got in the way. I do have an introductory video linked down below. I desperately need to redo it because that was back when my setup was dog shit and I was not comfortable in front of the camera. But either way, I go over all the rules of the board and what all the spaces mean. I do also now have a document linked down below in Google Drive where you have a full write-up of all the rules as well as all the spaces and a PDF of all the cards and the board if you wanted to play yourself. I had someone that suggested that I post that and so I did it. Uh, thank you for the suggestion, probably overdue. <laughs> but um, it's now linked in all of the Game of Tomes videos if you're interested for yourself. So if you're not familiar with the game, you can go check all that out, but the rules are pretty simple. I just roll the dice and I move across the board and I find books to fulfill the prompts that I'm given and I have to read those every month. So if you watched the last one I posted, which must have been June's TBR because I didn't post one for July or August. This was the stack plus pines by Blake Crouch and I did not complete this in time. I first pulled House Tully. I had to read a translated book and I picked The Outsider. I'm pretty sure I completed this in the month of June, so at least that one was done. I then pulled a location card. I had the Dothraki Sea, which was a seasonal read. I picked The Rise and Fall of Ancient Egypt. I still have not finished this, unfortunately. Then we had Miss Marjorie Tyrell. I had to read a popular hyped book. I picked The Way of Kings. I did find I finally complete this, but just last week, uh, so it definitely doesn't count for the TBR. <laughs> then I had Brawn, I believe that was to randomize my thriller and mystery TBR. I'd picked Pines by Blake Crouch for that. I started it, I think I got halfway through the audiobook from the library because that was the hold that came in and then I had to return it. I don't know if I'd pick it back up or I'm counting that as a DNF. I mean, the TBRs failed already, but like, I don't know if that one counts. Uh, and then the last one was, I had, oh yes, I landed on House Stark, which was a reread, and I reread Ink Spell by Cornelia Funk. I obviously finished this, like this is a pretty quick read. So only three of the books were actually completed. However, given that it was a pretty tumultuous couple of months, I took an impromptu trip to Europe. I was finishing my MRP. I was just in general in the trenches. <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna give myself any kind of punishment. I'm not gonna do the usual kit and caboodle. I'm not gonna pick any negative cards or move forward or backward or whatever. We're just starting from where we ended up last time and just moving forward because I don't want to make myself fall into another reading slump. I just can't afford that at this point. So sucks that I didn't do my TBR from last month. I did the game, but we're just moving forward now. This month, I not only want to do my TBR game because I have not really been sure what I'm in the mood to read, but if that wasn't enough, I want to do the magical readathon. So I participated in spring. I think I completed everything. Yeah, I did. So I chose to be a scribe. So I had four books to read in spring, which was nice because this time I have seven. And I decided that I'm going to do seven rolls <laughs> to make my life difficult. And hopefully I can match up each roll to each prompt. I'll put the prompts up here and we're going to see what we can do. If I can get this to match, I am the sexiest person alive. And that's that. You cannot, you can't argue with me. If I can get all seven roles to match with all seven prompts, I'm insane. There are a couple of things I have to do beforehand. So, so one of my prompts is to use a like color wheel picker and based on the color I get I need to then pick a book that has that color like the title of that book is that color I don't think I explained that very well basically random color generator or wheel whatever color I land on the book I pick has to have the title in that color hopefully that made sense the second time around my issue was I used a general one and every single color I landed on I did not have. So I'm going to put my own colors in and we'll see what we get. And based on that, I'll keep that in mind going forward with my rolls. All right, so we're gonna look up a color wheel picker. We will be editing because I don't have all of these. There's too many. 
So what we will also do is we will do a white, black. I don't know why the colors don't match up, but I think that's all I really have. Like most, most book titles, the colors of which fall under like a few categories and I feel like they're all there. Like red, green, blue, yellow, white, orange, black. I don't think I have purple. So they're all pretty plain. So I think that's the, oh, well, can I adjust that? Oh yeah, I can, thank God. Those are gonna really stupid. And the blue will be more blue. I feel like it's implied that it's multiple blues, so I'm okay with that. Okay. We got red. Another thing is one of the prompts is also the acknowledged author, which gave me such a hard time. I went through several of my last five star books and could not find an acknowledged author. I considered bringing it to like 4.5 star books, but I thought, as far as I remembered from the video, it was really like recent five star books. So I had to go all the way back to like June of last year, but I finally found one. So we're gonna see if I can work it into this. If not, I'll just give the prompts at the end, uh, but hopefully I can figure out a way to match all my prompts, like all my roles to all of my prompts that I have to do. So let's get right into it. Let's see what happens. I'm terrified. Seven books is a lot. I haven't read that much in a while, but I believe. So that's where we ended up last time. We're very close to the end, as you can see. I may or may not have preemptively treated myself to books by the end, but that means now that we're starting the board over, I will be going on a book buying ban, I promise. Let's get into rule number one. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, House Tyrell, which is a nonfiction question mark. Forgetting my own rules. Yes, it is. All right, so for our first roll, we landed on House Tyrell, and the prompt is just to read a nonfiction, so that's quite easy to start off with. So I've decided to pair up this prompt with the title color, so it's a good thing that I did that. So if you recall, we had red. And I'm giving myself two options for this just because I don't know what I'm in the mood for and I have a few ongoing books. So I've got two options right here. This first one here is Medieval Bodies, Life, Death, and Art in the Middle Ages. First of all, it's so beautiful. I picked this up in London last summer. I got, they stamped it for free. It's like a nice little souvenir. I saw this in the store and I was just instantly drawn in. My goal was to pick up a book I hadn't heard of or that looked intriguing. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, this looks really interesting. I hadn't heard anyone talk about it. Maybe it's just a UK thing. I don't know. It was just so spectacular. I don't know much about it, but it just looks like a really fun, um, a little fun read. It's got beautiful color images inside, which is really fun because I find that a lot of books cheap out and don't put color or they have like a few pages where they're like shiny, like laminated almost. And then those are color, but this is like throughout. So that's one of the options right here, the font. The title is in red. And the other one is one that I've had on my list for a while. I actually gifted a copy to my mom and she still hasn't read it. So I think I'm gonna read it and make her feel really bad about it. <laughs> that's Invisible Woman, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men by Caroline Criado Perez. So I'm pretty sure um, she's from Ottawa or she visited Ottawa and she like signed a bunch of copies at our local bookstore here. Irrelevant. Either way, this is a book about how the world has essentially been designed for men. Everything down to the air conditioning, temperatures in office buildings, um, seat belts, the medical system. Everything's been designed for men. And when it's been tested for women, it's not really been tested with women in mind. And I'm really interested in kind of scientific data for this. For some reason lately, I've been wanting to kind of learn more about like medical misogyny in general but something about this feels like a good like introduction and i've just heard so much about this book specifically and how eye-opening it's been from like a data point of view so i'm really really excited to get into this one but it might be a bit too heavy so i think i'm just gonna keep both of these in my back pocket they both fulfill the prompt for house tyrell obviously because they're both nonfiction, and they both have red titles so i'll see what i feel like all right let's go for roll number two six 
One, two, three, four, five, six. God damn it. I'm breaking my friggin' Monstera here. Okay. What do we got? Okay, that's not too bad. We're just gonna roll again. Based on what number I get, I move forward or back. Back, here we go. All right. I rolled a six. I rolled higher than a four, so I get to move up two. But because I'm on the dotted line, I get to move. Uh, that didn't work. There we go. Let's try roll number two again. Four. One, two, three. Did I count that right? Yes, four. Character card. Who do we got? Miss Gilly, read a book from a series. That should be easy enough. All right, so now we've got ourselves Miss Gilly. And again, I can work this into the magical readathon TBR. I am so hyped. So a book from a series that also happens to do with a scent. So the prompt is, where is it? Oh yeah. It's for elemental studies, it's my favorite scent. I'm a big perfume nerd. I'm a huge fragrance nerd. I really, really like it. And so I went through a few of my favorite fragrances and I tried to pull out some notes that I really, really enjoy, but I could, I could also easily find in a book title. A lot harder than I thought. Um, but I narrowed it down to something that I had on my shelves that I am really glad that I was able to kind of make it work. And it's the first book in a series and that's The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. So I'm not sure what this is about. I believe you're following two women living different lives in this empire that have to come together and do something. I'm sorry, this one is one of those that like the hype got to me and I just wanted to read it because everyone was reading it and I don't know much more than that. Given that She Who Became the Sun, which was another one of those hyped um, feminist sapphic books didn't really work for me. I'm a little apprehensive, but I have slightly higher hopes for this because this at least sounds a bit more like a classic fantasy and not the historical fantasy that She Who Became the Sun was. So I'm hoping this works. And then yeah, it fits the prompt because the first book in a series and Jasmine is a note I really like in fragrances. So, so far so good. Let's go for roll number three. My focus here, yeah. Four. One, two, three, four. House Martel, which is a free space, I believe. Okay, so we got House Martel, which is a free space, which is really, really exciting. Here's the thing. One of the prompts for this uh, job I want to do, the scribe, is to read a vampire book. I only have one on my shelves and I think only one on my TBR. Regretfully, it's by an author I'm no longer platforming on my channel. So I'm just going to say that is my plan. I bought the book before he made some unfortunate comments about black women. So I'm going to read the book because I have it, but I will not be platforming it. That's all I'm going to say. That's going to be to fit my prompt for Martel, which is a free pick and also for vampire books. And we're going to move right along. All right, rule number four. Two. One, two. We've got Karth, read a book with a light cover. That should be easy enough. Alrighty, so we got Karth. So this has to be a book for my own TBR with a light cover. I admit, I kind of went back and forth on this. Um, I'm not really sure, wasn't really sure at least how to fit it in, but I think I figured it out. So one of the prompts, like I mentioned, is to go into a recent five-star book, go into the acknowledgements and find an author that was like thanked by the author of that book. I had to go all the fuck way back to Howl, which I read last like June, I think. And he mentions right at the beginning, because he was part of the beat generation or he, okay, he dedicates it to a couple authors. I'm counting it. I can't do this anymore. So he dedicates it to a few authors uh, from the beat generation, which was his generation, namely Jack Kerouac and William S. Burroughs. Now I have some Burroughs on my shelf and then I realize I do not want to read Junkie right now. Not, not the schmood. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have Jack Kerouac on my shelves, but I was planning to pick him up anyways. And there's this lovely edition that matches a couple other books I have of On the Road that has a light cover and he's in the dedication. So I'm counting this. I don't have it yet, but I will get my hands on it. Um, so it'll fulfill the own. I know you're not supposed to buy you. I know I'm not supposed to buy books 
they're supposed to be for my own TBR. But we're making this work for the Magical Realon. It's a book I was going to buy anyways. At some point, I've wanted to read Jack Kerouac for a while. I know he's very divisive. I know the book is a novel about two people going on a cross-country road trip. That's all I know. I know not everyone loves it. I don't know if I'll like it, but I'm curious enough to try it out. And like I said, this edition that I'm planning to buy has a light cover and just works all around. So that's what we're going with for this and for my magical readathon prompt. All right, roll number five. I haven't done one of these in a while. Five. One, two, three, four, five. That's not a book, but I will take it. In which case, let's do a roll 5.1. That didn't work. Let's try that again. There we go, one house tully, which is the jar. So this is the jar. We all know the jar by now. These are spare prompts. Now what I'm wondering is if the smart thing to do would to be put one of my existing prompts for the magical readathon in here. But I feel like that wouldn't be fun because I've made all of these. So we're gonna make my life more difficult. And that says, you cannot see that. That says red on the cover. We got another house tully. I've been pulling from the jar a lot lately, it seems like. So we've got red on the cover, which of course now in retrospect does not make that much sense because I already had red, but you know what? It's fine because one of the prompts for the Magical Readathon is to read a translated book. And so I've decided to do Madame Bovary by Gustave Lebar. Robin was recently talking to me about this and she thinks I'd really like it because it's kind of drama and I love drama. So I think that means it's just a good time to pick this up. It's been kind of on my mind lately. Um, it's also part of a reading vlog that I'm doing. So I think it's just good to get going on that vlog for one. <laughs> Fit a book from that in. It fits the house tully prompt because there's some red on this cover. It's very light, but I'm counting it. Um, and it's translated. This is translated from French. This is the story of a woman who marries a wealthy man thinking that her life will instantly be better and wonderful, but she lives in the countryside, her life's boring as shit, so she starts up an affair and apparently it just goes off the rails and drama ensues. And I like that. I think that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. It's a classic for a reason, I'm sure. Everyone likes a good drama. All right, let's go for roll number six. I swear to God, if we can match all of these to magical readathon books, I will be so happy. One, two, three, four, another House Martell. You know what? I will take it. All right, so we got House Martell again, which is rare, but I'm not complaining, especially when I have a readathon and I have seven friggin' rolls. I will take it. So one of the last prompts left is um, The Night Sky. I think that is four. That's for restoration. And I only had two books on my shelves that had Night Skies, but you know what? I'm kind of in the mood to read both of those. So again, we're gonna go with two options like I did for our first prompt and I don't wanna hear it. There we go. So we've got The Long Way to Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This was one of my five-star predictions like ages ago. I still don't know if I think it's gonna be a five-star, but I think I'm gonna like this. This is a almost cozy sci-fi I've heard it be described. Um, you're following a crew of a ship that kind of creates rifts through space for other ships to travel through. And apparently it's just very character focused. And I think that if we're going for cozy, I need character focus. So I think I'm going to like this more than some other like cozy books that I've tried in the past. I just, I, I don't know, for some reason, I think I might still really enjoy this, even though I don't think it'll be an automatic five stars. And I like that all of these books in the Wayfarer series are kind of standalones, but in a connected universe. So I think that's nice. There's kind of less pressure to read them all one after the other. So this has a beautiful night sky on the cover. And then the other one is also, once again, Beautiful Night Sky. This is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is a post-apocalyptic story following a troupe of actors who perform Shakespeare plays. I've heard this one's also kind of on the cozy side, but also still there's that element of survival because it is in a post-apocalyptic world. I think this is the one I'm leaning towards between the two. Um, something like there's been a lot of hype around Emily St. John Mandel recently, so I think this is what I'm leaning towards because I've never read any of her works. 
and it's just a little bit shorter. I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know, I don't know, cozy, cozy and like fantasy sci-fi are not things that go together in my mind, but I think I need to give them a try and I think if any of them are bound to work for me, it's not gonna be like legends and lattes, it's gonna be something like this that still has a level of stakes to it, but it's maybe a bit more character focused, maybe just a little bit slower, so. Those will go towards my free pick for House Martel, and they both have a night sky on the cover for the Magical Refund. Don't think I've ever gotten this many, but I will take it. And our final roll, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, okay. Well, we'll throw a wrench in the plans then. So this is Theon. He smiled a lot, as if the world were a secret joke that only he was clever enough to understand. And so I have to go to my sci-fi TBR, use a random number generator uh, on Goodreads. Uh, my sci-fi TBR on Goodreads. Use a random number generator and pick the book that corresponds to that number. And we have arrived at the final prompt, which is Theon. So let me grab my iPad. There it is. And let's see what we got. So we've got our random number generator loaded up. Let's go to Goodreads. Let's find the shelf. There are 30 books. Perfect, it's already sorted. Twenty. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. The past is red. So the past is red by Catherine M. Valente. I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I don't know much about this. I heard Marinez talk about this, and she, it was one of her favorite books of like last year or the year before. She was just raving about it. It's fairly short, but it's very impactful, is what she had said. The future is blue, endless blue, except for a few small places that float across the hot, drowned world left behind by long-gone fossil fuel guzzlers. One of those patches is a magical place called Garbage Town. Tetley Abednego is the most beloved girl in Garbage Town, but she's the only one who knows it. She's the only one that knows a lot of things. That Garbage Town is the most wonderful place in the world, that it's full of hope, that you can love someone and 66% hate them all at the same time. But Earth is a terrible mess, hope is a fragile thing, and a lot of people are very angry with her. Then Tetley discovers a new friend, a terrible secret, and more to her world than she ever expected. That tells me a lot of nothing, but it came highly recommended on booktube so that fulfills mr theon's prompt and also the past is red has all the letters of my first name in it which is perfect because that is the final prompt i needed for the magical readathon which is uh, it's an o in inscription and the past is red has all the letters for dasha so i have fulfilled all seven of my magical readathon prompts. Do you know how proud of myself I am right now? So proud. <laughs> so here's the tentative stack, minus two books, but at the same time, I'm not reading all of these. So, oh yes, he who shall not be named. There we go, okay. So this plus a book technically, but not these ones, the past is read and on the road and another one. So it's a it's a big stack. Um, I'm a little intimidated, but I'm incredibly amazed that I managed to fit all of the roles in with all the prompts so I can become a scribe and finish the magical readathon. Isn't that incredible? Will I finish all these books? I have a lot more time on my hands, so maybe. I'll try really hard. Are you participating in the magical readathon? Did you, first of all, did you do the spring equinox and did you succeed? And are you doing the fall equinox as well? What is your chosen profession? Let me know. Let me know if you have similar prompts to mine and what you picked for those. Because some of these were not the easiest. Like, I'm not a fantasy romance girly, so finding a vampire book was... My choices were limited, let's just say. So let me know if, yeah, if you're participating, what your job is that you're hoping to graduate and work for. And other than that, like I said, if you want the rules for the board, if you want a copy of the board for yourself and the cards, that is linked down below. You guys are welcome to go and access that. Other than that, my social media is also linked down below. You guys can always come talk to me there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.